So I want to talk about that, what it takes to go full-time. I want to ask you full-timers out there your advice, because I'm not a full-timer. I have not made that leap. I don't think I'm going to make that leap anytime soon. It sure sounds nice, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave today as we always are, it seems. I was so hoping we would be in the Commonwealth cabin by now. Baseball season is beginning. Matter of fact, I think tomorrow, I'm not sure when this video will air, but I think tomorrow baseball season has begun. So there is four more hours of the day that I have to commit to something else, which means that, and I've been telling this for a while here, we're going to slow down posting just a little bit. Initially, I think I'm going to not post on Mondays, and then over time it'll it'll dwindle back, I think, to four days. For the next couple of months anyways, it's just, I, I just can't keep up with the listing. I could do the videos and, and get them posted, but the listing is difficult for me right now. I've been posting, I think, maybe five to eight items a day over the last few weeks, but it's going to have to dwindle down to just a couple, which means the sales will dwindle, which is okay. Um, it's usually what happens in the spring, and then as we ramp up towards the end of spring and into the summer, I start listing more because baseball season ends. And then by the summertime, I'd like to have this show over on the Commonwealth Flipper channel anyways, which was amazing. So many of you are over there um, watching um, the content that we are putting out over there. In the meantime, before we get the show over there, I had a comment from another person that had bought an Inaman, and they were talking about full time, and I had mentioned that a few days back, three or four days back on a video, and they had mentioned the same thing. So I want to talk about that, what it takes to go full-time. I want to ask you full-timers out there your advice, because I'm not a full-timer. I have not made that leap. I don't think I'm going to make that leap anytime soon. It sure sounds nice, but I don't think I'm going to do that. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But we had some really nice sales, including this thing right here, which is something that Blue Ridge Mama had sold. And I am uh, really happy about this sale. We've been waiting since mid-summer, I think maybe early summer, for this guy to sell. And we took a uh, an offer on it, which is not something we always do, but we're happy to on that one since it's such good profit. So at any rate, we did have three pieces of clothing sale. I think we had a hat sale, and we had a few more items sell as well. So let's take a look. All right, first item up is this Sony remote, and that just reminds me as I peek up there. I still have viewers asking me, what am I looking at up there? There is a monitor up here that tells me how much items sold for. So I, I'm a full-time teacher, so I don't have time to edit those things into the video um, because I do all the editing on my phone, and I do it at my lunch break, and I do it during my planning period, and I do it before I go to bed. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking up at that screen right there. So if you don't believe that the prices I'm selling for or what I'm selling it for, go to the store, and you can look at completed, and you can check it out. $15.81 for this Sony receiver remote control and this is something that my boy bought at the joyous junk garage well it's not a garage sale it's like a, a fundraiser sale up at the catholic church up by smith mountain lake which is near where we live here in uh, bedford county um, it's right on the line between bedford county and franklin county at any rate most of you don't know what i'm talking about anyways that is an enormous sale absolutely enormous sale and the prices are kind of high to be honest with you but it is just unbelievable, and it is jam-packed with people. It's like an experience. It's kind of a pain. I get a little claustrophobic, but he bought a box of remotes. I don't know how he got them such a great deal, but a box of remotes for two bucks at that garage sale is amazing. So this one sold for $15.81. We're going to end up making a couple hundred dollars off of that box. All right, we have four Inaman going out to Lisa, Raymond, Marty, and Rob, and thank you all so much, and we hope that these guys get the things moving out of the back end of your store. Uh, that's kind of the point of this, I guess. So at any rate, thanks so much. All right, here's a great item with a great story. And this is Lily Pulitzer, size small, and it's got these little elephants on it. And my wife doesn't get to go out with me. You know, Blue Ridge Mama, A, she likes to sleep in on Saturdays. But B, 
Somebody's got to stay here and watch the kids while I'm out doing all that garage sailing. So when Commonwealth Grammy comes out to visit in the summertime, there's one or two Saturdays a year where she gets to go out and do some garage sailing with me. And when she went out this year, we're at a garage sale, and I found a couple of great things. I'm like, man, we're going to make 50 bucks on this. We're going to make 20 bucks on this. This is a great garage sale. And she comes to the car with this thing and a vintage Harley Davidson like overall outfit and i'm like how much did you pay for those she's like a quarter a piece and of course i knew the harley thing was gonna sell this thing she said this thing's gonna go for 50 bucks i <laughs> think you're out of your mind it's not going for 50 bucks it just sold for 45 dollars free shipping so she paid a quarter for this and a quarter for the pair of jeans amazing all right so here's the topic of the day and this is going out to lynn I bet, Lynn, when you wrote this, you wouldn't uh, think it'd be the topic of the day. Hi, Commonwealth Picker family. I'm a reseller and planning to go full-time in April. No joke. That's what he says in parentheses. No joke. Uh, April Fool's. April... Oh, I get it. Now I get it. It takes me a little while, you know. You'd think I'd be smart being a teacher, but I'm not so smart. I go full-time April 1st. No joke. That's April Fool's Day, of course. That's also the day after my birthday, just FYI. I'm hoping any man can bring me and my family luck. Thanks for the videos. So, Len, thank you so much. And I hope that you have all the luck in the world too. And I just wanted to talk about this for just a second because I mentioned it, and a lot of people had mentioned it in the comments, that I had mentioned something about uh, going full-time doing this. It's something that I really had never really thought of seriously doing. You know, my wife stays in the home and she helps me do this. So she doesn't have a job out there, which means that my job provides the insurance for the whole family. Now, I tell you what, being a teacher, I got to be honest with you, it actually only covers my insurance. I have to pay for, for the rest of my family's insurance. But it's still, it's a, you know, a reduced rate. You're saving a few hundred bucks. There's a pension and there's retirement. So it's a difficult decision for, for somebody like me. And I just wanted to talk about some of the decision-making process that would go into going full-time. Now, I'm not an expert in this because I'm a part-timer, but I want to hear from some of you full-timers out there. When did you decide to do it? Has it worked out well? Is it something that you grew into because you didn't have a job? Now, there's a different way to do it. If you have a job, do you want to make that switch and go from the job to a full-time reseller? Or do you do it almost not out of desperation, but out of necessity? and then grow it into something that you can make work. Do you do it because your wife or your husband has a full-time job outside the house? Because for me to be able to do it, I have to replace a teaching income, and it can't just be with what I already make from eBay, because I depend on the teaching income and what I make from eBay in order to make ends meet. Because let me tell you, from where I live, even though it's pretty cheap, what a teacher makes can't support a family of five, not to mention three animals. Sophie and Pepper <laughs> and Boots. At any rate, I'm getting off on a rabbit trail. So I just want to get your opinion on there. My opinion of the situation is, for most people, it'd be very, very difficult to go full-time as a reseller unless you have a spouse that is doing something else. But I, wanna, I know a lot of people out there. I know a couple of pickers, and there's a few people out there that are full-time, and they're doing it as a couple and they're making ends meet. And I think it's possible. Matter of fact, I know myself where if I was out of a job, I'd make it work. I'd just work, you know, 15 hours a day until it worked. That's just the way I am. But it is a difficult decision for a lot of people. So I'm just curious to get your feedback out there, what you think about going full time. And is it something that, you know, you would have to scale up over time? Is it getting so competitive out there that it's harder and harder to do that? So you full-timers out there, leave your comments below and let me know how it's going for you. For me, I think it's a difficult decision. It's just a hard thing to put your whole family's future, not at jeopardy per se, but a little bit in question because of retirement benefits and things like that. So at any rate, I do think that it would be a dream job if it was feasible. I would love to do it. I may do it someday. Who knows? I don't know. I got 10 years left before I get that teacher pension. 10 years. So, And I think I'd feel a little bit of a void not teaching history because I love history. Let me know your feedback below and let me know what you think. All right, here's one that's almost like a personal choice here. This is a Fender Stratocaster PlayStation rock band guitar. 822151, I think. 822151, it's a Harmonix. It's really not that heavy, 
but obviously you got to put it in a long box. You're going to have to Franken box. You might get away with Franken boxing a 1095 together. I think it's probably probably going to fit in that, but I'm not sure. But you have to Franken box something or find just a, an interesting box that you can uh, cut down for this. But it'll sell uh, fairly quickly. This one sold within a week. I listed a little bit under market value. I listed for $22 just because I wanted it out of here because it was sticking out of this thing up here and I needed that space. So uh, You can pick these up. I usually won't pick one up if I have one in the store already. And if I don't have any, then I'll pick one up. So that's usually my rule of thumb. Right, this one's going off to Arthur. And Arthur says, Hi, Kevin. I watch your videos on both of your channels. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And want to thank you for all that you do. I watched your video on Coleman Lanterns at 2 a.m. this morning, and you talked about the Christmas tree lantern. That's on the Commonwealth Flipper channel. I actually have these two lanterns out right here, and those are the two I used in that video. So you watch that video. I remember seeing one just yesterday at an indoor flea market and passed on it because I thought the colors were mismatched. It's red and green, so usually you'll see a red lantern like this or a green lantern, but you don't usually see that red and green lantern. And he saw it at a flea market, passed on it because I thought the colors were mismatched. Needless to say, I was there first thing in the morning when they opened and bought it for 20 bucks. That is a great story. It was a not it was a 951, meaning it was a it was made in 1951 in September of 1951, which is something I said on that video. And if you ever find one green and red and it's gonna say 1951 on the bottom, you've got hundreds of dollars right there. Um, for a Coleman lantern, and depending on the condition, of course, it could be as little as a hundred, as much as five, six, eight hundred dollars if it's pristine or new or anything like that. So those are great ones, 1951s, and you take those Coleman lanterns and you turn them upside down, and you can see it'll it'll give the month and the year. But it's a no-brainer. You see red and green, just pick it up. At any rate, Arthur, thank you so much. I'm glad you made that great purchase, and keep us updated on how much you sold it for. All right, here's just a run-of-the-mill Levi's jacket. It's a modern one. It's nothing amazing, and it's a size small, so that's no good either. But I picked it up for four dollars, four bucks, Oops. and I sold it for twenty bucks plus shipping. Is that right? Twenty bucks plus shipping. So it's not a huge profit, but you know, you make about fourteen dollars profit on something like that. It's an easy lister and a fairly quick seller. I probably underlisted the market by a couple of bucks. I probably should have bumped it up to at least. 24 25 dollars i might have had to wait but i'd have got it for that all right this one's going out to patrick and patrick says thanks kevin for everything you've done for us who watch your videos and follow your channel i learn something new every time i watch them this may be too much to ask but will you please sign the man you are sending i'm going to place it in my <laughs> my office at work uh thanks again patrick and joy lynn is that right williams so I just picked one out right there, and that one's autographed for you. And we appreciate it. We appreciate the support. And this guy's on his way to you. All right, we sold this Pepsi hat, and it is made to look old. It's actually not vintage, I don't believe, if I remember the listing. Vintage 90s. So, it, yeah, so it's 90s, but we're not talking like uh, 70s here. But it's a neat-looking hat, and it says uh, 5 cents on there, so it's a pretty cool-looking hat. And this one looks like it went to a viewer. It says, hey there, Kevin, just wanted to say thanks for all the great content. Been following your videos for the past couple of weeks, and I've gotten a lot of value from them. I just started a channel of my own. We'd be thrilled for any feedback you could give. All right, well, I'll go check that channel out. Matter of fact, hold on just a second. I just looked that thing up. Phoenix Resale is what it is. So, Caleb, thank you so much. And this is on its way. This was something we got in a massive lot of hats. And in that lot of hats, I had bought it. I was called up by a friend who knew I did resale. And they had a friend that had lost their husband and was just trying to unload stuff. And before they donated it to the Goodwill, they called me and they said, hey, this guy might buy this stuff. And I came over there. And uh, there were some pretty nice hats in there. I can't remember how much I paid. I paid like a hundred and something bucks for it. But there was a John Deere hat in there. And then a bunch of other decent ones like this. This one sold for $15.81. All right, every once in a while I have a shirt that's like screaming, get me out of the store. <laughs> and this was it. And so it was like a $15.95 shirt or something like that. And I just reduced it to $14.81. 
it was a Goodwill buy, and it must be really, really old, because I would never buy this now at Goodwill. It's just not much money in it. It's over fourteen eighty one. So, selling for fourteen eighty one for a shirt you bought for four bucks after fees and after shipping, you're only making like four or five dollars on this thing. But it's still four or five dollars I didn't have, so it's out the door. All right, this one is going out to Jamie, and Jamie says thanks for all the hard work you put in. We enjoy your YouTube channel. So, Jamie, thank you so much. We're glad you enjoy it. All right, not a game I would necessarily tell you to pick up. This is NCAA 08 football. But if you can tell right here, this is brand new in the package. And so that's why I picked this one up and it sold for $20. It sold for $19 actually. And so because it's in the package, it made it worth it. If it wasn't, it probably wasn't going to be worth it. I might have picked it up if the price is right and sold it in my antique booth. But to get $19 for this and only pay like a dollar for it is worth my time for sure. Matter of fact, for those of you who are new resellers out there, forgive me if you've been around a while and you already know this, but if you find the PlayStation, I guess it's 3, 2014 NCAA football game, pick it up. If you found one new in the package, 2014, I don't remember who's on there. I just remember being Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, I think is the... Oh, now I'm going to get uh, hate comments below because I don't remember the guy <laughs> who's on there. Anyway, it's a Michigan football player. This is Boise State, and it's 2014. And that game, I've only sold one, but that game, brand new, would go for well into the hundreds. I, I My guess is last time I checked, probably around $125 for a brand new 2014 NCAA PlayStation game. So keep an eye out for those out there. All right, and the last two in a man going out of the day, and this one's going to... Actually, let me read this here. It says, Hi, Kevin. I already have one, but I really would like to see these in Tommy and Tracy's eBay rooms. Uh, LOL. Please connect with them for shipment. Also, please add the difference of the regular price, viewer price, Travis and Lisa's fun. Thank you so much. And we are keeping track of that. I haven't been updating it because, to be honest with you, it takes a while. So we're going to wait to the end of the month and then we'll go back and track it and see where we're at on those things. At any rate, we are definitely, this is in it to flip it, by the way, in it to flip it. So thank you so much for doing that, Susan. I don't know if you want me to say your real name, but there you go. I just did. So you are awesome, and I love communicating with you in live shows, and that's really, really nice of you. And we're going to send this off to Uniquely Me and Tommy. We're going to send this off to you as well, and I better see it behind you in your show out there. So at any rate, that's very nice of you. And matter of fact, Susan, I know you already have one, but I'm going to send one more off to you, and you can find somebody else that you can send that to. Thanks so much. All right, just want to say thanks for joining us, and don't forget to leave the comments below if you're a full-time reseller out there. Give us that are part-timers some advice. Should you do it? Should you not do it? And give uh, Lynn out there some, uh, some heads up. He's going. He looks like he's confident and ready to go full-time. So, Lynn, we wish you and your family the best of luck. And I'm going to try to link that hat video where we got that uh, John Deere hat and we got that Pepsi hat, if I can remember to do that. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. All right, just got one more sale real quick before I was finished shipping out today. And this one, is, I don't have a first name. I'm so sorry, but this is going out to El Cajon, California. That's Jimmy Johnson territory, if I recall, and not too far from where I grew up. And you said you came over from Matt at Part-Time Pickers Channel, and so we really do appreciate it. And this one's headed your way. You see who's down here saying hello? How you doing, Sophie? I ain't got no food, girl.